Hello everyone and welcome to this week's After Effects scripting tutorial. Today we're going to be creating a layer size calculator where we can take any layer, select it, and press calculate and it will give us the width, the height, the left, and the top of that layer. So we can calculate all these data and information. We can even just type in some random text and if we go in here and calculate it, it's gonna give us the accurate width and height as well as some of the other position data we can get from using the uh, source rect at time feature. So this is just an incredibly simple script where you select one layer and gather all of this data. So let's go ahead and just get started. We're gonna be writing about 50 lines of code today and we'll start by opening a new JavaScript file. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is create our UI or user interface right here. So we have just a title called the layer size calculator. So I'll just leave a comment saying layer size calculator script and then we can start to make our UI. So we'll have a main window, which is just gonna be, we'll call main window. We're gonna create a new window and the parameters we need to give it is first the type of window. So we're gonna create a palette window, which means it's just in this little palette format you see here, just a standard like windows type of window. And then we'll put the name, which as we have is layer size calculator. And then we can put the size and dimensions if we've predefined them, but we don't have that in this case, so it's undefined. Then we're going to set the orientation or which way all of the items within it are going to be organized. If we set it to column, everything inside of it's gonna go from top to bottom. If we set it to row, it's gonna go from left to right. And basically what that means is if we had it just set to row, if we had everything set to row, everything would just go from left to right. But as you can see here, we need to go from top to bottom. So I'll grab my main window and the orientation and set it equal to column. Then we need to create three different groups to put all of these elements inside. We need to have one for the width and height, one for the left and top, and then one for the button. So I'm going to create three groups, group one, group two, and group three. Group one is gonna be equal to our main window, and inside of our main window, we're gonna add our group undefined size, and we don't need to name it, but we'll just call it group one. And then because we want everything inside of group one to go left to right, we want the width text, this here, the height text, and then this here. So we want the orientation to be a row. So we'll say group one dot orientation is equal to a row. And then we can basically just take this and paste it onto the two other groups we created and just change the text. So we have group two, group two, and then copy and paste group three in here as well. So now we have three groups. Let's go ahead and fill them in. So in the first one, we have four different elements. We have this initial width text that tells us it's the width. We, then we have the calculated value once we press the button. Same with height, we have some text that displays what it's gonna tell you. And then we have the actual value that's gonna be changed with the script. So I'll create a variable called w static text. So just width static text. And that's just very simple naming. We know it's for the width and we know it's a static text element, so we know exactly what we can do with it. So we're gonna set this equal to group one, and we're gonna add a static text element, pretty straightforward, with an undefined size parameter, and the text is gonna say is just W, but if you want, you could also say width. For now, I'll just say W, and then what I also wanna to do to make sure everything in this uh, script UI lines up nicely, I want everything to sort of have the same size dimensions. So as you can see here, these texts line up uh, with everything else. So what I'm gonna do is grab my W static text and the size, and we'll just arbitrarily say something like 50 pixels wide by 25 high. And then we can go ahead and move on to the next one, which is going to be our sort of changing text. For this one, I'm gonna just say is W change text. And we'll set this equal to group one and we're gonna add static text. And it's gonna have an undefined size, and just to start, we're gonna just have a little hyphen to, uh, since it doesn't start with any value until you press the calculate button. Then we can do the same thing and change the size to be the same. So I'll change my size to be the same at 50 by 25. Then we need to basically copy and paste this and change all the W's to H's for height. So we have the height static text, which is gonna have an H, and we'll go through and replace everything from width to height. And now just to see where we're at with the UI, we'll grab our main window.center and main window.show, 
and this will allow us to center the window and see it in the UI. So we'll make sure we're connected to After Effects here and press play. You can see now we have our width text, the little dash where our calculated value is gonna be for the size. And then we also have it for height and it's dash. Now let's go ahead and fill in group two and group three. For group two, we can really just copy and paste this. It's the same exact format, as long as we don't forget to change the values. So we have all these same variable names that need to be changed. Instead of width, we're now gonna be looking at width, height. Well, the width also has the left. So we'll have L static text. And that's gonna calculate the left rect value of that. And then we'll change these Ws to Ls as well. And then we also have top. So we'll change height to T. And now let's go ahead and preview that. You can see we have everything lined up in one row, which means that we forgot to add it to group two. You can see we're adding everything to uh, group one here. So let's change that back to group two and refresh that. All right, so now we have all of our text set up. We just need in our third group here to add our button that's going to actuate everything. So I'm going to create a button called calculate button and we'll set this equal to group three and we're going to add a button, undefined size, and it's going to say calculate. So now we have our UI all set up. All that's left to do is create the uh, function to handle it and calculate these values. So in order to do that, well, what is doing the action? We have our button here that we click on. So we're gonna grab our calculate button and say on click, which means when we click on it, you can see there's also on-click handlers for checkboxes, icon buttons, and radio buttons. So if you had any of these UI elements in your script, you could essentially use this on-click code for that as well. And we're gonna set that equal to a function with our parentheses and brackets here. Inside of this function, we're gonna basically set up the code and make sure everything's ready to calculate it. What I mean by that is, how are we going to know what layer is selected if they don't have a layer selected? So the first thing we need to do is check, is there a comp active right now? Do they have something selected that we can calculate? Because if not, then we, we can't really go into the code because it's not gonna work. So I'm gonna do two if statements here. Well, the first one is gonna check, is there a composition selected? That's a good thing, we want that. But we also need to check, is there one layer selected? We can basically select any one layer and calculate it. But we don't want zero layers, there's nothing to calculate, and we don't want two layers because we don't have enough display room to calculate that. So we wanna make sure that their fixed parameters are, they have an active composition and a layer selected. So in order to check if a composition is active, I'm gonna say if app.project.activeItem is equal to null, or I'm gonna do a reverse here by using an exclamation mark. If app.project.active item is an instance of a comp item. This is saying if the current item selected in After Effects is null, or basically meaning nothing is selected, or if it's not a composition item, then we wanna tell the user, please select a composition. And then we'll say return false, which will exit out of this function and just basically send them back to the interface to try again. Then the second bit we're gonna have, we're gonna say if app.project.activeItem, we now have a composition selected for sure if we've made it to this point in the code. We have to say if selected layers.length is not equal to one. So if they have selected layers and it's two, we just want them to have one. So what we're gonna tell them is please select only one layer. And then same thing to get out of this block of code, we'll say return false. So just to recap, once they click on the calculate button, the first thing it's gonna check for is there a composition selected? How do we do that? Well, first we say, is there anything active in After Effects right now? If there's not, then we know a composition isn't selected. We're also gonna check if there is something selected, is it a composition? Because you can select a folder and it's gonna try and calculate the stuff based on the folder and that's not gonna work. So make sure it's a comp item and it's active. Then with that being in mind, we're assuming at this point, if we've made it this far, there is a composition selected. Furthermore, we need to make sure there is exactly one layer selected inside of that composition. To do that, we just grab our active item, which we know is now a composition, and we check the length of the selected layers. If it's zero, we need them to select one. If it's more than one, we need them to just select one. Now we can start getting to the main part of the code, which is gonna be referencing out to another function. 
I'm just gonna call it calculate size. And down below, I'm gonna say function calculate size. But we do want to bring in some elements so we can calculate everything. The first thing we wanna bring in are the things in the UI that we want to change. So we wanna change all these change texts with the little dashes. So I'm gonna bring in my cha W change text, my H change text, my L change text, and my T change text. So this is gonna give us all the elements we need and we're gonna be basically doing the calculation and then using these to put in the text. Then we're simply going to grab our layer. So I'll say layers zero, And that's just going to imply that we already have an active item that's a comp and one layer selected, and this is it. So down in calculate size, we're gonna bring in and just call these things different names. We'll call it width with text, height text, left text, top text, and layer. And then it's just gonna be a couple lines of code here. We're gonna set our width text, and we wanna grab the text within it, which will reference currently this little dash, and we're gonna set the text equal to something. And then I'm gonna hit duplicate three times and change these out to the other variables. So we have width text, height text, left text, and top text. And now we need to do the calculation itself to get the width, height, left, and top. And to do that, we're going to grab our layer, but we're gonna first create a variable called rect. And we're gonna set this equal to our layer dot get rect at time. And the time is going to be zero usually, but what we want to do in this case to make sure that our layer is actually visible and can be calculated, we're going to grab layer.containingComp which grabs the comp above it. So if we have this layer selected, it's gonna know it's in comp one. Containing comp will reference that. And then for containing comp, we're gonna grab the time, which the time will reference the current time indicator. So if it was here, it would say five seconds. If it was here, it would say zero. So instead of just saying zero as a default time, we'll say that, and then false for the second parameter. Now lastly, to set our values, we'll grab rect.width, rect.height, and all the names here are gonna be matching and that was on purpose to make everything more simple and easy to understand. So we have width text equals rect.width, height text equals the rect height, et cetera, et cetera, all calculated based on the get rect at time function. So let's go ahead and run this and test it out here. First thing I'm gonna do is make sure no comp is selected and click on calculate. So you can see it tells us properly, please select a composition. So I'm gonna do that. And now it says, please select only one layer. Well, what if I wanna select all my layers? It's gonna tell us, please select one layer. So I'll go ahead and select one layer here. Let's do some, actually let's make a new text layer. And now we can click on calculate and you can see we're not quite getting what we want. So let's figure out where we've gone wrong here. Since I don't know exactly what's wrong, this is a good opportunity to show you how I bug test these things if I have no idea yet what's wrong. What I do is I just grab a couple of right lines and then just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or A, B, C, D, E, F, and I find where it's getting in the script. So I'll select the layer here, calculate. You can see I'm only getting to A, which means the problem is here. Our layer dot get wrecked at time is not correct. The reason for that is because it is not get wrecked at time. Those of you that are more expression savvy than I would know that it is source wrecked at time. So now if we run it, select our layer and calculate, you can see now we're gonna get those values. And uh, then we can of course go in and get rid of these, these lines. And then they won't appear up here in the console. All right, so now we can go through, select any layer, press calculate, and do what we need to do to get those values. One quick last note is that uh, if you want these to be rounded or to a certain decimal place, what you can do is use math.floor, and this will basically floor it, which means that it's going to round it to the nearest integer, no decimals. If you want something more specific, you can use dot to fixed, and this will fix it to a certain number of decimal places of your choosing. So if I type in two, and then I calculate, you can see I'm gonna get two decimal places right here. If I type in four, 
I'm going to get four decimal places. So if you want it to be more readable or more consinct and rounded, you can use either of these uh, built-in functions to either fix it to a certain number of decimal places or round it to the nearest integer. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. This was a lot of fun to create, and it's a very simple script that can come in handy while doing some menial tasks in After Effects. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them down below. But as always, we'll see you guys next time in the next tutorial.